Hello, and we're glad that you're here for the PINS tutorial. In this video, we will be walking through the first four exercises of the PINS Getting Started tutorial. This tutorial is designed to be interactive and self-paced, and you will be both watching and reading to complete it. The written content is on GitHub, including configuration files, scripts, and references. It is probably easiest to read the readmes on GitHub, but we also suggest cloning this repository locally if you plan to try the exercises on your own hardware. Take a second to pause the video now and open the tutorial repo. Welcome back, and hopefully you now have the repo available. In each exercise, you will first watch the exercise introduction, then pause the video and read the exercise readme in the corresponding folder. If you have access to hardware, you can try to replicate the steps in the README in your own lab. After you've finished reading and possibly trying each exercise, return to the video and unpause. Judy will walk through the steps in the README on ONF's hardware cluster. If you find a problem with the content, like a typo, missing instruction, or a bug in one of the scripts, please file an issue. We'll keep an eye on those and update the content to improve the tutorial for the next user. We would also welcome you to address these issues yourself and send us a pull request. If you have other questions, ideas, or more general discussion topics, please use the discussions section of the repo. Here you can post topics and add comments and upvote ideas and questions that resonate with you. Please feel free to answer the questions of other participants, but we will also have some staff members who will monitor and try their best to answer things as they come in. With those logistics out of the way, I'd like to hand it over to Judy Snow to walk through the tutorial. Welcome to the PENS tutorial. PENS stands for P4 Integrated Network Stack. It is a project that provides components and modifications to Sonic, allowing P4 and P4 Runtime to control the network stack remotely. This tutorial is for people who want to see a functional SDN stack running on Sonic and observe the interactions between a pin switch and the SDN control plane. Activities assume a basic knowledge of Sonic, SDN, the P4 language, and ONOS. To complete the first four exercises, it says you will need two switches, a server, and two hosts. You will need to get the Sonic target images with pins for your switches. If your switches do not have a previous version of Sonic installed, you will need to use the ONI or a boot installation software on your switch. The exercises in this tutorial use a variety of Linux and Sonic commands either directly or in the scripts we provide. The following exercises provide step-by-step -step instructions and validation. In exercise one, you will deploy target images on your switches. In exercise two, you will configure host and switch interfaces. In exercise three, you will set up connections using a simple command line interface for P4 runtime. In exercise four, you will deploy ONOS on your server and push the network configuration using flow objectives instead of the P4 runtime client used in the previous exercise. This exercise enables ECMP with two routes between the two switches. An additional exercise in github.com slash pen slash tutorials explores the demonstration environment at the OCP Summit, ONF implemented pins on a 2 by 2 leaf spine fabric and demonstrated WCMP using ONOS and SD fabric. In exercise one, we will install Sonic with pins. First, you need the correct image for your ASIC and switch. If your switches already have Sonic, you can use the Sonic installer commands to load and verify your image. In our lab, it takes a couple of minutes to load and then reboot the switch. 
Currently, we have images for Intel Tofino and Broadcom Tomahawk 3 in our GitHub repository. We may add more images in the future, or you can build your own image using the tutorial appendix. For greenfield deployments, use Oni or Boot for installation, as described in the tutorial. After the switch reboots, check the version with the show version command, use docker ps to make sure that Sonic P4 runtime is up, finally use netstat to make sure that P4 runtime is listening to TCP on port 9559. This completes our demonstration of exercise one. The tutorial configuration consists of a server, it can be a laptop, two switches, and two hosts, as shown in the diagram. There are a variety of ways that you could implement this configuration, such as using two servers, or using namespaces, LXC containers, or VMs on a single server. For simplicity, we will show two separate hosts. This exercise will set up the host interfaces and internal routes. Then you will set up the Sonic switch interfaces. You will not be able to ping between the two hosts because the routes between the switches do not exist yet. We have not configured BGP or any other embedded control protocol. You will be issuing commands on host 1 and 2 and switches 1 and 2. In exercise 2, we will configure the network interfaces for two hosts and two switches. First, check the status of the interfaces on your switches. In our lab, two of the interfaces are up, but one is down. We check and see that we need to set the switch interfaces on Ethernet 120 to 40G to match the host interface configuration. We offer suggestions in the tutorial, but ultimately you need to determine the unique network configuration in your lab. On the two hosts, we assign 10.1.1.2 and 10.2.2.2 to their respective interfaces according to the sample tutorial configuration. We set up the outgoing routes 10.2.2.0 and 10.1.1.0 to the switch interfaces. Back on the switches, we configure the IP addresses for the switch interfaces to 10.1.1.1 and 10.2.2.1 and verify that they are up. We clear the sonic counters to make it easier to see traffic. We go to each host and attempt to ping between them. Because the routes cannot, between the switches have not yet been set up, the pings do not work. You can look at the sonic counters and see that the packets we received from the source, the host, but were, were, were never transmitted or forwarded through the fabric. There are several ways to set up an SAI pipeline and routes. This exercise uses P4RT client and exercise four, we will use Onos. For this exercise, we will use P4 runtime client to isolate our initial sonic behavior via the pens P4 runtime interface. You will be able to ping between your two hosts through the pens fabric at the end of this exercise. The software scripts and instructions used in this exercise are found in github.com slash pens slash tutorials. Before starting exercise three, use the Redis CLI keys command on the switches to verify that the P4 runtime routes show an empty array. On a server where you've cloned the tutorial and are in the exercise three directory, you need to get the P4 runtime client a simple command line interface that we provide. There is also an auxiliary tool for MAC address conversion if needed. Both of these binaries need to be executable. Edit the P4, run, P4 runtime client setup shell script 
to match your network configuration using Figure 1 in the tutorial as a guide. It will set up one route between the switches. Run the P4 Runtime Client Setup script. Verify that there are no errors in the output. Go back to the switches and you can see the routes in the Redis database and clear your sonic counters. Go to the host and you will see that your pings are working. Further verification is done on the switches where you can view the sonic counters and see that the pings are going through the network fabric. Using the same topology as Exercise 3, you will use the ONOS controller and REST API to configure the pipeline and routes in this exercise. You will be able to ping between your two hosts through the pins fabric at the end of this exercise. There are 11 sample configuration files used in this exercise in the pins tutorials repository. You will need to edit these files to match your network topology. The sample JSON configuration file, tutorial-netconfig.json, sets up routes through both switch connections, Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 104. The script file flowobjectives.sh contains eight curl commands, one for each flow objective. The corresponding JSON files contain commands to set up routes in both directions between the host through both switches. While not providing a tutorial on ONOS, we show you the ONOS GUI and use it to look at the topology, devices, links, hosts, and flow entries. Before starting Exercise 4, use the Docker commands that we provide in the tutorial to set the VRF option in the P4 Runtime container. ONOS currently requires that P4 Runtime orgs include the default VRF0 option, while non-ONOS controllers may not. You need to reload the configuration on the switches anytime you change the VRF option or any other flag. After reloading the configuration on your switches, you need to reset your network configuration as you did in Exercise 2. On our switches, we have to set the switch interfaces to 40G, configure the IP address, and verify that they are up and properly configured with the Show Interface Status and Show IP Status commands. The host configurations haven't changed, as you can see with the IP address and IP route commands. On the server, we are now in the Exercise 4 directory. We provide you with a Docker container to run ONOS with the PINS components already installed. While you wait for ONOS to boot, edit the tutorial netconfig JSON file to match your network configuration. You can also verify that there are no routes on your switches with the Redis CLI. Push the configuration to the network with the curl command shown. A possible error is that ONOS is not fully booted. This step is analogous to the P4, push p4 info command in exercise 3, except that ONOS now pushes the pipeline and the driver. Verify the Redis ACL entries on the switches. On the server, the ONOS CLI confirms that the configuration specified in the JSON file was pushed. The pings between the hosts do not work because we have not yet configured the flow objectives. In Exercise 4 on the server, the flow objective script contains eight curl commands, one for each flow objective. The corresponding JSON files contain commands to set up the routes in both directions between the host through both switches. Edit these files to match your network configuration. Run the flow objective script 
and verify that the flow objectives have been set up in the Redis database. There are now 16 entries. The pings between the host work and you can see the traffic transmitted through the network fabric. Another way to view the network configuration is with the Onos GUI. You can see the topology, devices, and links that we have configured. We are not attempting to teach Onos in, to you in this tutorial. However, we provide links to Onos documentation in the references section of this tutorial. Finally, if you go back to the topology diagram and click on one of your switches, you can navigate to the list of flow objectives that you created in this exercise. This concludes exercise four. The PenSonic project provides five capabilities to incrementally implement new SDN functions in Sonic, choose the network control plane and assign which parts run locally or remotely, model the SAI pipeline in P4 to control bridging, routing, ACLs, tunnels, and more, develop new data plane features in P4 and expose them to control plane applications, test and validate packet paths in the forwarding pipeline with P4 runtime. Why would you want to add SDN functionality to Sonic? When you add SDN functionality to Sonic, you can enable hitless route sequencing and inline network functions such as load balancers and firewalls. But more importantly, you can optimize data center utilization by analyzing in-band network telemetry, INT, and implementing weighted cost multipath, WCMP, also known as UCMP. What SDN functionality does PENS add to Sonic? Sonic is based on a switch abstraction interface, SAI, a standardized interface to allow programming and managing switch ASICs in a vendor-independent fashion. PENS works on all existing Sonic targets using SAI features including fixed functions, for example, routing, and configurable ones, for example, ACLs. PENS programs the SAI pipeline in P4, bringing SDN capabilities to Sonic. What components does PENS add to Sonic? Sonic is structured into various containers that communicate via a shared Redis instance through multiple logical databases. The PENS project adds an application running its, in its own container that receives P4 programming requests from an SDN controller and writes intents to new, the new P4 tables. In Azure Sonic Swiss, P4ARC and P4RT tables were added to process database entries, create SAI objects, and add them to the ASIC database. PENS also introduces modifications to Azure slash Sonic Swiss Common and Azure slash Sonic Build Image.